Hey y'all, howdy. Welcome to One for the Books. I'm Sandy Broadwell, and today we're going to talk about Buzzwordathon. So if you're unfamiliar, Buzzwordathon is something that Kayla over at Books and Lala started. So basically just every year, it's something she does for her channel members where it's a reading challenge to hit the vocab words that she picks out at the beginning of every year. I don't follow along with it super closely in that I don't try to hit the vocab terms in the months that she says, but I do think it's kind of fun to see how many of them I actually have hit out of the 12 so far. So this will be a vlog where I'm figuring that out in the first half, figuring out which vocab words I have not yet hit out of the 75-ish books that I've read so far this year. And then I will be reading some of the ones that I haven't yet to complete the challenge or get close to at least. Let's dive in. So I'll be looking down because I have my notes on my laptop right here. For January, we have the word there, which could be any of the three there's. For February, it just had to be some sort of positive word. For March, the character name had to be in the title of the book. For April, it had to be a nature themed word. For May, it had to be the word every. For June, there had to be a repeating word in the title. For July, there had to be some sort of measurement. For August, the word like had to be in the title. For September, it had to be a sense, sight, sound, taste, touch, something along those lines. For October, a relationship had to be in the title. For November, the word only had to be included in the title. And for December, a word associated with a holiday. So let's see how I've done. Right off the bat, I have not read any books yet this year that have the word there in the title. So not starting off super strong, but we'll circle back to that. For February, I have read a couple of books with positive words in the title, but it's funny because every book that I've read that has had a positive word in the title has also had a negative word in the title. So I'm putting in here Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis, which was an excellent collection of essays and speeches by Angela Davis about Palestine and Ferguson. So freedom is obviously the positive word, but then it's juxtaposed with struggle. And the other one that I thought of that I've read, which I actually just read last month, was The Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie, which has peace as the positive word, but the trouble with. So anyway, I just thought that was kind of interesting. For character names in March, I read The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. Amina al Sarafi is the main character, so that counts. I also read Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands, Emily Wilde being the main character. So I think either of those would have counted. For April, Nature Words. I've read quite a few books with nature words in the title, so I just chose one of the Singing Hill Cycle books for this one, which is Into the Riverlands by Nevo. For May, I have not read a book with every in the title. So we'll have to come back to that one. As for June, a repeating word I read it lasts forever and then it's over by Anne DeMarkin. So it is in the title twice. <laughs> and that was a really fun, fun is not the right word. That was a really thought provoking read from the perspective of an undead woman. So it's a zombie book. <laughs> For July and measurement, I have A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie with little being the measurement. For August, the word like I did not think I would have one um, in this one, but I did read a really great nonfiction book called Sing Like Fish, which is about underwater sound and the impact of human activities on underwater ecosystems, which was endlessly fascinating and one of my favorite books of the year. So that checks that box. Then in September for Senses, I have Speaking Bones by Ken Liu, which is one of the books in the Dandelion Dynasty, since speaking covers one of the senses. For Relationships in October, I put Children of Time, children being a relationship. And November only, I do not have a book that has the word only in the title that I've read so far this year. It's funny because one of the books that Kayla actually recommended in her like recommendations for buzzword books was The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, which I read for my buzzwordathon vlog last year, actually, because last year she had a month where good was the word. So I read The Only Good Indians for that vlog, which was a really fun vlog, by the way. But so that is the only book I can think of that would have been on my TBR that had the word only in the title. So we'll circle back to that one too. And then finally, holiday words. I have not read any books with holiday words in them 
thus far this year. So as of today, it is early November and I have read eight of the 12 required buzzword, buzzy word books. So what does that mean? <laughs> For holiday words, I was planning in December to read the Catherine Arden trilogy that starts with The Bear and the Nightingale. I'm blanking on the name of the trilogy right now, but the very, the third book in that series is called Winter of the Witch. And winter, Kayla did say, would count as a holiday word. So I will not be reading that book in this vlog, but I will be reading that book before the end of the year, assuming <laughs> that I at least like the first two books in the series. So that's my plan for the holiday word, but that means that I need to read a their book for January and every book for May and an only book for November. So what are my options here? <laughs> Let me go to Goodreads and I will scroll through my TBR and see what books I have that have those words on my want to read list. So let's click on my want to read and we'll just type in these words and see what comes up. So we have there, I have three books on my Goodreads want to read list that have there in the title. I have a collection of horror stories called Out There Screaming, which is an anthology put together by Jordan Peele. I have a collection of short stories by Kate Folk called Out There, which I've heard is supposed to be really good. And then I have a novel called There There by Tommy Orange, who is a Native American author. And November is actually Native American Heritage Month. And I've been wanting to read that for quite some time and haven't found a way to squeeze it into my TBR. So I'm going to choose There There by Tommy Orange as my There book for the Buzzwordathon challenge. All right. So let's type in the word every and see what pops up here. I have three books that have every in the title that are on my want to read list on Goodreads. I have Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson, which is like a murder mystery. Every Hearted Doorway by Seanan McGuire, which is like a young adult portal fantasy. And I have Everybody Lies, a nonfiction book subtitled Big Data, New Data, and What the Internet Can Tell Us About Who We Really Are. That was a book that a friend recommended to me that does sound super interesting, but I don't feel like I'm in the mood for a nonfiction right now. So I'm not going to consider that one. So my options are the young adult Portal Fantasy, Every Heart of Doorway, which is the start of a very long series, or I have Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, which has been a really buzzy murder mystery in the last year or two. And I normally am not a fan of mystery novels, but this one has been getting a lot of hype and it's supposed to be pretty tongue in cheek, I think kind of making fun of the genre, the murder mystery subgenre, I guess. So that sounds pretty intriguing to me. And I'm not really drawn to YA at this point in my life. I do think I could read the Shauna McGuire series at some point in the future, but I don't think I really wanna start it right now. So. I'm going to go with Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. Wish me luck. All right, so that just leaves only in November. So let's search and find out what only books are on my TBR. Yeah, the only one that popped up is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, which I read last year. So, uh, okay, I'm going to have to find, I'm going to have to do some digging around and see what I can find to fill that requirement. I'll be back. Okay, here's what I found <laughs> after some searching. There is a Riley Sager book called The Only One Left, which Riley Sager is a really popular thriller author. And I think I would be intrigued to read one of his books at some point, but this is not the one that's going to introduce me to Riley Sager. I didn't feel like the plot was that intriguing to me. So I did a lot more digging around trying to find a book with only in the title that sounds interesting to me. And what I came up with was Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast by Oscar Wilde. It seems like it's a pretty short book, but it's a Penguin classic. And I did read Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde in the last couple of years, at least. And I didn't really love Picture of Dorian Gray. I thought it was pretty boring, but the like, introductory section where it was just Oscar Wilde kind of speaking his mind before it dove into the story of the novel I thought was actually really interesting. So I think that a nonfiction like collection of essays type thing by him could be really good. So that's what I'm going to go with. So those will be my three reads for the vlog to get me all caught up on the buzzwordathon and just leave me with my December pick left. So that's going to be there there. Everyone in my family has killed someone and 
Only dull people are brilliant at breakfast. Let's get to it. I'm halfway through everyone in my family has killed someone and I am not loving it. But to be fair, <laughs> I didn't really expect to. I probably talked about this in the intro where I just, I don't love mystery books and I keep trying them every year or two thinking this is gonna be my time. I really want to be into mystery and I'm just not. But this one was supposed to be kind of like more tongue in cheek and it was like, it had some gimmicks to it that I thought, oh, maybe, maybe this time it'll like really hit me and I'll really be into it. And I'm just not, it's a good book. I definitely don't deny that. It's just not holding my attention the same way that a similar quality book of genres that I like a lot more would. So part of that also is probably because I'm in the middle of a move right now. We are actively moving into our new home in Asheville, North Carolina, which is super exciting, but boxes are everywhere. I haven't had a lot of time to read, but even when I have had time to read, I just haven't been quite as motivated to pick up this book. I wanna love it and I can see why a lot of people love it. And it is, it is funny, like I get the appeal. So basically the main character, he tells you like right from the get go that like seven different people are gonna die in this book and they're gonna happen in chapters like 17 and 30 and 11 and blah, blah, blah. So he keeps like foreshadowing in like a breaking the fourth wall kind of way, which is really entertaining. Uh, according to him, you know, everyone in his family has killed someone and so you are, going through the book by learning about these different people in his family. And the kind of plot of the story is that his brother is just getting out of prison. He hasn't seen him in three years. And because he is getting out of prison, they're all having a family reunion at this like ski resort. So it's the first time really anyone in the family has gotten together in the last three years. So that's kind of where the plot is kicking off. And right away, like the first day or the second day that they're at the ski resort, someone dies. So part of it is unraveling the mystery of what happened to this random man that was at the ski resort with him and was it one of his family members that did it? And at the same time, you're learning all this backstory of how other family members have been involved with murders over the course of their lifetimes. It's a good time and I think if I wasn't quite so busy and hectic in my normal life that I probably would have flown through this already. But like I said, I've just been, I've just been busy <laughs> and it hasn't been a huge priority for me or it hasn't been like gnawing at me to keep reading it. So, but my library loan is due back very soon. <laughs> And there are other people waiting on the book, so I can't renew it. So I need to, I need to get with it and, and really finish this book and crank down. So hopefully next time I tune in, it's to tell you my final thoughts are on the book. So last night I finished Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. And I gotta say, it was really great. I, I just don't like mystery books. I really wish that I did. I really want to be a mystery girly. But, and I can tell that this one was just like really well written and the story was super fun and it had a lot of things going for it. But I just, I just really, I wasn't that interested. I talked about that, I think a lot in the first clip, so I won't, I won't belabor the point, but I did crush the second half of the book in one sitting or in one evening, I guess. So it was super readable. It, it just took me so long to get through the first half because I had so much going on in my life and that's fine. I would recommend this book highly to anyone who is looking for a mystery, but for a reader like me who just doesn't love mysteries, it was very skippable and I probably won't remember a lot about it in another couple of weeks, so that's that. And I have moved on to the second book of the vlog. I started that last night. It is called There There. This is the month of November. It's Native American Heritage Month, and so it feels super appropriate that this is the book that I'm reading for this vlog right now because obviously Tommy Orange is a Native American author and the story is very heavily Native American. It started off with just some facts about Native American history in the United States, kind of setting the stage, which was very eye-opening and very sad and unsettling. And then it launches into the first character who is a, a young man living in Oakland, California. And he has kind of lived like a, a hard life so far. He has a physical deformity that makes people not want to look at him because his face is apparently weird. He has like 
his mother, he had like fetal alcohol syndrome or something like that. So his, his mom's in jail. He is kind of living a little bit of like a street life and his friends have recently convinced him that they're gonna rob the powwow, this like event that's going to be happening soon. So that's kind of where the story kicks off. That's all the further I've gotten into it. I'm about 10% of the way in so far, but just wanted to let you know I have started it and I'm very intrigued to continue. The next chapter is going to be from a different character's perspective. So I'll let you know once I've read more. I don't know how many days it's actually been since I updated last time. We've been moving into our new house, so things have been a little crazy, <laughs> but I finished There There. I pretty much read the second half of the book, I think like all in one sitting. It was super interesting. I think in the first clip, I was telling you guys a lot about the very first character that was introduced in the book. I did not realize how many characters there were going to be. I assumed there were going to be, I knew it was like a multi POV book and it was like telling different native people's stories leading up to this, the big Oakland pack wow but I did not realize like I said how many different points of view there were going to be and so where I was thinking you know there might be like four or five different points of view there were like a lot like basically every chapter was a completely different character and they did circle back back to some of the main characters and, and some of them I think we only got to hear from like once or twice it got confusing for me to, to keep track of them all and how their stories kind of overlapped or intertwined. So that was a mark against the book for sure. But the stories were all very interesting. They all focus on Native American peoples in the modern day living in Oakland, California, or that have ties to Oakland, California, and this big Oakland powwow that was all of them were planning to attend or had ties to somehow. And of course we learn in the very first chapter of the book with the very first character that's introduced that they're planning to rob the powwow. It's kind of this looming threat that's building up through the entire book. And then when the actual powwow does take place towards the end of the book, the robbery is taking place, there's a shooting, quite a few people are shot, and it kind of just had that sort of literary ending where you don't really get closure on a lot of the characters. It just kind of ends and that's always a little bit unsatisfying to me. And so, but the story was, it was really good. It was really eye-opening into what the Native experience is like, especially like an urban Native experience. And there was a parallel between, there was a, one of the characters was trying to film a documentary basically where Native people tell their own stories about what their life is like in just these like short story segments and so many of them feel conflicted about what it means to be native and how they're not seen as native or they're not native enough or you know they don't look native even though they are native and things like that and so it was really interesting that character's story where he's collecting these stories and then the, st the novel itself was sort of this collection of stories as well so i think there were a lot of interesting clever things done i think the writing was really really well done and the story was fascinating and important, but I again, I just wish there was like more closure. It was a little too literary for me in the way that it ended, but I would highly recommend this book. And I definitely, I heard that Tommy Orange, the author wrote another book kind of in the same world or in the same vein called Wandering Stars. I'm not sure if it follows any of the same characters or not, but I know it was just nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards and I think some other awards as well this year. So I definitely am interested in picking that up at some point in the future. Good book, recommend. So I could not find only dull people at Brilliant are, are brilliant at breakfast on Libby, my library app. So I did end up buying it for my Kindle. It was like a $2 little book. And immediately when I opened it, um, it's just quotes. There are like, it's just like a series of quotations. I was expecting more essay style format because it's a nonfiction book, but it is literally just like sentence long thoughts. There's very few even like paragraphs. So I think this will be a really quick read and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, y'all, it is later the same day. I have just finished Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast, which is just a fantastic title. We have to give credit where credit is due, but the entire book is just little quippy quotes like that. And I think 
that Oscar Wilde would have been a really fun guy to have at parties <laughs> if he was alive today. And in many ways, I think a lot of his ideas are ahead of his time, but he also was really sassy and, and witty. And so I think if you could not keep up with him intellectually, you would probably get burned pretty fast. So I'll just read you some of the ones that I highlighted that resonated with me for some reason or another. Life is much too important a thing to ever talk seriously about it. An idea that is not dangerous is unworthy of being called an idea at all. We can forgive a man for making a useful thing as long as he does not admire it. The only excuse for making a useless thing is that one admires it intensely. As soon as people are old enough to know better, they don't know anything at all. The tragedy of old age is not that one is old, but that one is young. One can live for years, sometimes without living at all, and then all life comes crowding into one single hour. So literally, that's just that. It's just like 52 pages of little one-liners like that. So like I said, really, really quippy, really sassy, fun and thought provoking, but overall not a super memorable read uh, just because there was no like substance to it. I think if some of these had been more in an essay format or he'd expounded on them, they might've been more impactful, but definitely great little, great little one-liners to just like cut out and put on your bathroom mirror or whatever. So that is the buzzword-a-thon reading vlog for this year. I have now read 11 of the 12 buzzwords <laughs> and hope to get to my final buzzword in December. So let me know down in the comments below if you've read any books that meet the buzzword-a-thon reading challenge or what books you might recommend that meet the buzzword readathon challenge words for this year. And as always, thanks so much for tuning in and hanging out with me for a little bit today. Please be kind, read more books, and hit the subscribe button down below for more bookish content to come. I'll see you next time.